Right ladies, I am now actually going to use the machine to cut something. I've decided from the Cake Basics to do a butterfly. Um, I'm going to do this slightly thicker butterfly. So according to what we do, we need this to be the shift. If this was a normal keyboard on a computer, this would be your normal case and this would be your upper case. So I need the upper case, which is your shift to get this picture. It is on my pad over here. There it is. Um, if I wanted a solid one, I would use, I would press the button on the size that said Brace Shadow Blackout. Um, I can't really see what the difference between these two are. Um, somebody else might be able to spot that. They look pretty simple to me. It could be that on other different ones you get something a little bit different on them. But I'm just going to go with something basic. I'm not going to do the letters. I'm going to do this butterfly. Uh, this one in particular. So, switch the machine on. Everything will light up. Ooh, I'm going to stop that right there. It would look like I've got, actually it won't matter, it looks like I've got a little bit of red from a previous cut um, on my wheel. So I really need to, I thought I'd cleaned the wheel, but obviously I missed the bit that was underneath. I cleaned the top bit. And of course, because the machine wasn't on, I, it didn't roll around and I didn't see this little bit of red here. So I need to get rid of that. Get rid of it. I will clean that bit off just now. And I'll run this machine and get rid of that mark. It that comes off quite easily. It's quite an easy machine to clean. I am going to, uh, before I, um, I'll start by loading the paper. Well, not the paper, the board. It says paper, but this is because Cricut do crafting and this is their cake machine so I have rolled quite thin I don't know if you can see this on my shadow gets because it keeps getting in the way I've rolled my paste quite thin um, I don't know if you can see this it is you can see the pattern through that's how thin I've done it the paste I've used is Mexican paste which I quite like for this um, and I've left it a little bit to dry a little bit so that it doesn't pull as easily um, you may need to change your blade now and again if it isn't sharp anymore. But I have had this machine for quite a while and I haven't changed the blade yet. I think it's probably due for a change. I'm going to load the mat by pressing the load mat button. And it will load it up. Now, where the actual cutting blade is, is nowhere near my icing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the mat up by pressing the, this button here. Move it up a bit and then move it along so that my blade is over. Now I could stay here, it would mean that the machine will set itself so that it never cuts to the right of the cutting blade. If I'm not happy with that and I want to use this bit over here, then I would move the mat further up and then move it back, i.e., like this. Up it goes move it backwards and I can move my cutting. So wherever I move my mat, my cutting blade to, at start position, it will never go back beyond it. This will, it will just stay there. So I'm going to just go back, as you can see I'm fiddling, so I can get my mat, it, my cutting blade into where my icing is. You will note I have trimmed the edge. You don't want anything over this pink area, so I tend to avoid the line next to the pink as well to stop it going on to the wheel, which is what happened over here. I obviously um, didn't notice what I was doing and I let it roll over there and it caught on the wheel. Right, I want to do, I have set the pressure and the speed at medium. I need to get my little note up here, we're loaded. And I want this, which is the butterfly. So the butterfly is on the shift point, so I'm going to press the shift, press my butterfly, and the picture should come up. If we hold on a minute. Now I've set it at two inches, I could make my butterfly four inches, five inches, whatever size I want, but I'm just going to leave it at two for now. Um, if I want to make more, then I do a quantity and then I use my right and left 
to decide how many. I've got a quantity of two at the moment, so I can go up to three, four, five, six, or I can go straight back down to one. Okay. I've done the size. The size is the button on the, it's a dial on the right hand side. The pressure and the speed are on the left hand side. Um, if I wanted to make toppers for say a cake and I was doing butterflies, I could make sure that I cover this whole mat with paste and then I would press the autofill and the autofill function would come on and when you then press to cut, before it even starts to cut, it will work out how many butterflies it can cut out of the piece of paste you put on there, which is normally the whole area. Um, so if you're doing a lot of toppers for cakes, little cupcakes, that's quite nice because once you know you're getting whatever it is, 30 or 40, you can then walk away and leave it to cut, come back later. So I'm going to do one butterfly. I'm doing a two inch butterfly. Now, when you cut these, they cut downwards. They don't cut across, they cut downwards. And then the mat will move in and out to line it back up to do the next slot down the next line. So it works downwards, it doesn't work across. So if you're doing letters, you have to appreciate they're gonna come down this way. What you also have is not necessary for a butterfly, but if you're doing words, you might want to have a mirror image. If you're gonna have a mirror image, there is a flip button here that allows it to flip it over so you get the reverse. Doesn't matter for this, because to me it looks like both sides are the same, um, but I, if I needed to, I could. I don't use the other <clears throat> buttons, but I'm guessing that the center point means it will take my cutting point to the dead center of my mat. I don't know why I would need that, but there might be a reason for it. The mat size, there is a mat size here that you can manually change, but normally as it's fed in, it senses what the mat size is. And right over here on the edge, you can have a standard 12 inch mat, which is what this one is, or you can have the long one, which is twice, much, much longer, and it will select which one it is. That way it knows, I presume, how many it can cut out of your shape. So I have rolled this out. I've left it a little bit to dry a bit, to firm up a little bit. And now we will see if it will cut it. So I've done my butterfly. I want one. I want it two inches. And I've lined this up so that the cutting blade is actually on the paste that I have cut out. All we have to do now is cut it and hope it cuts but it's not going to play games with me because I haven't used this for quite some time. stopped. Now if I wanted to do another one or do a different shape, I could then just move the mat, whoops, move the mat up to the top, move it across and cut something else out. If I'm not going to be doing anything else, I will unload the mat. This button here, unload mat. And I don't know if you can see that, but there is my butterfly. And all I'm going to do is peel away the outside and use a um, blade or something to pick out the bits. I tend to leave them on the mat for a little while, um, especially if it's letters, so they don't stretch out of shape. Just leave them to firm up a little bit and then take them off. And that's all you have to do to cut something out. Thank you.